Hello everybody and welcome back uh, to the Limbis Company. Ba -da -da -ba -da -da -bum -bum. Alrighty, it's time that we continue along in the <laughs> ever-expanding story of LC. So, I did do... <laughs> I succumbed to my own greedy desires and did a couple uh, spins. So, I did, in total, 40 spins, 4, 10 spins, depending on how you want to look at it. And one might say that we got a little bit lucky. And we ended up getting something relatively special. So, uh, I'm, I'm going to break it to you right now. This identity is ridiculous. <laughs> she is so strong. Pair her with red eyes. She's just unstoppable. She is ridiculously strong. And I love her. Um, yeah. So her whole thing is if she's faster than, en than enemies, she gets buffed. You want to know what red eyes does? It makes you inflict bind. Bind makes enemies slower, just in case you didn't know, but I'm sure you did. You know what Red Eyes Open does? It makes you empowered if you are faster than your enemy. So, absolute best case scenario. You use Red Eyes. You get the passive going. You inflict some bind. You don't even need to use Red Eyes Open because she's empowered in her base kit. A uh, very powerful identity. Overall, really reminds me of Ego Regret Faust. Because Ego Regret Faust basically has the same thing with Hex Nail. If you use Hex Nail, it basically buffs her kit. Because you're already inflicting so many different status effects. And then you're doing multi-hits, which is allowing you to just do a ton of damage. And it's overall very, very good. So, that being said, what am I talking about? Why am I uh, going on this long-winded rant? Well, my dear viewer, I, uh, I kind of want to use the maid identities, and I sort of wanted your opinion on that, because she's very, very powerful, and I recognize that, and also she is a th three-star, which, you know, I've been doing pretty good at not using three stars. We only have two selected in our story thing. But, uh, <clears throat> I really want to use her, and I'm going to. <laughs> but, but, hear me out. We might be using two three stars, but we're going to permanently have a one star on our team to balance it out. That balances it out, right? Like, one one star and three, uh, two three stars, right? That's like a... It's like one three star and just all two stars. Eh? Sounds pretty good. Yeah, I'm going to use her for this episode. If you guys decide she's too powerful, I'm going to take her off. So with that being said, let's finally jump into the episode where we continue with the pirates. What's <laughs> By the way, I'm going to apologize for it really early. If you hear my fan, I apologize. I need it. It is 70 degrees and currently 925 at night. So it's, uh, it's pretty hot. <laughs> <clears throat> so, uh, Ishmael, the Sabotomy Corps branch is still a ways away. Why don't you rest up for a bit while you can? That's what we always do anyway. I'm not going to get I'm not going to get it. I'm not going to or at least let me take the next shift. I've done my fair share of night watches. Gregor's yawn betrayed his confidence. Ishmael didn't care. She wasn't going to move from her station anyway. Ishmael looked like she was waiting for something to happen. Or maybe she was deathly afraid of something. Eh, she did not, not even for a second, leave the telescope. Courtesy of Rain, most likely, 
installed on the modified Mephistilis. That's a good attitude, Swabi. It's been my long-held belief that letting your guard down is to let your comrades down. I asked Otis her thoughts out of curiosity, but she simply replied that Virgilius had already acted upon the matter. If the executive manager would not take action, then that was that. She also explained that while she would not hesitate to clash with Ishmael again should the need arise, she would not continue this pointless tussle that only lowered the team's morale. I guess that's good enough. But we're in the middle of a lake. And as long as we stick to the, uh, the laws of the Great Lake, I don't see us getting... <laughs> there, ahead! Ishmael suddenly got up and hurried into the cabins as though she noticed something through the telescope. <laughs> Attacked by anything? My bad. Time to drift again, redhead. It's too late to change course. That trick won't help us here. It went through the trouble of hiding themselves in an artificial fog of war. We're obviously their target. It's a matter of time before they catch up with this ship now that they know our location. Deal with them as you will. Manager, permit us to board their ship. Are you sure that boarding their ship is the best course of action? If, you know, we want to save our ship? According to my experience, yes. Okay, I'll leave it to you then. I hope you'll continue to make wise choices like that. I sighed with relief, as she seemed to be going along with me. For now. With that, I took a few steps behind the other sinners and watched her. We'll hook their ship with harpoons! Force them into melee range. Somebody grab the helm and turn it on my signal. Hmm. Then someone should be on standby, ready to shut the engine off at the right moment. Hey, you! <laughs> Bring some extra rope. You, wait for the signal inside of the wheelhouse. Ishmael's explanations were rapid and confident. Otis nodded along affirmatively. The other sinners were quick to follow their instructions. Watching Ishmael throw her razor-sharp harpoon toward the pirate ship, I started to feel that something was off. There they were, the sinners, working so well together like clockwork. But underneath all that, maybe all that mattered to them was their own goals. I was wondering if all the times I've spent thinking, hoping, and contemplating our futures together were pointless. This thought lingered for a while in my head. Pretty sweet new layout. We're literally on their boat. However, it's enemies that we've already seen before. Look at this. Look at this. Is this not the most beautiful thing you've ever seen? Wrath resistance, sloth resistance, gloom resist resonance. Sorry. 
And, of course, uh, pride resonance. Yeah. Dude, but I'm just saying, this team, real good. Even though they do resist, you know, they resist our slash damage of one character. It's just fine. Like, we just do so much damage that it <laughs> barely matters. Especially because we're all powering each other up, in a sense. So it really just works out quite nice. We're lowering their attack. We're using, using Tremor. We're getting a ton of status effects so that a certain someone does more damage. Tremor synergy, blunt damage synergy. It's just, it's real good. Um, now, where's... You know what? Let's just do that. I'm pretty sure that this wins, especially because we've uh, we've got two AOE attacks going on. Okay, you are finished! Ten health. It was close. <laughs> uh, what's the matter? You don't like multiple characters on our team hitting like four people at once? You know, if we had Otis, the, uh, you know, shooty shooty gun gun Otis. Then we would literally. Oh, it'd be so good. But oh well. Yeah, craft it. We were gonna board your ship first. We've got places to be, things to do, okay? Now, answer my question. Lie or flap your gums meaninglessly, and I'll tear the lips off your mugs. Speak. Who sent you plonkers after us? We can't let someone who dared to lay a finger on our first mate leave in one piece. That's Your very breath brings shame to our syndicate. By Captain Hook's orders, you won't leave here alive. <laughs> Ain't that bloody marvelous? I like seeing a good camaraderie. So what I say about flapping your gums meaninglessly? Think your threats will rattle us? Well, you're no tender foot, you stupid sons of bachelors. Oh, what a clingy bunch. We spared their first mate's life. And this is a thanks we give? Sumi, you think this is what Smi meant? That we'll regret it if we... No. No. Your juvenile whining. That's not from shame. What? Huh? I'm When all of your mates lay dead, consumed, manipulated, and led into a meat grinder by a collective insanity of a madwoman. When you are left in that endless void where the only sound is the beating of your heart. Uh, it's, it's, 
꼬락선이 속에서도 살아남고 싶다는 박동이라는 걸 알아버린 그때 See when I hear these sounds, my first thought is how is this pirate still talking if she's being like absolutely bludgeoned? Like you look down, there's just paste. Not not even like dust, not even just a splatter. It's just paste. The the ship is red because of this pirate. You know what I mean? <laughs> so how is the pirate still going? Wait. I don't know. Maybe uh, Ishmael's just like butchering other bodies that are nearby. Who's to say? The devs. And when you realize that, your heart continues to beat because it's still desperately, pathetically clinging on to life, despite all that. That's... And you'll feel true shame. I kid at a bar. No, either Peter Bonica, Tom, my amo got to more than I won there. Okay, yeah, so she was just butchering random other pirate bodies because there's no way this pirate would, <laughs> would still be talking, let alone alive. Let imagine you're thrown into like a uh. You know those machines that just, their whole point is just to, like, slam meat? Like, just over and over, like, they just press it? N not a grinder, but, like, you just literally squish meat for, like, hours on end. Those machines? Imagine going through that, getting spit out, and going, Well, that kind of hurt. You know what I mean? That That's kind of what I'm imagining if Ishmael was just bludgeoning this pirate. Wait, wait. Looking at the sorry state of your boat, I can hazard ye have no clue what you're doing out here. 나를 살려주면 다 말해줄게. 그리고 그분께도 이야기를 잘 들여보겠어. Spare me, and I'll tell you what you need to know. I'll even put in a good word to the boss man for you. 손해보는 장사는 아니잖아. 나까지 죽어버리면 그분이 오해를 하실지도 모르니까. Nothing to lose here, eh, lass? You won't have anyone to put in a good word if, if you kill me. Ha 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 ha! Ah, 그렇지. 역시 구미가 당기지. 만약 그렇게 되면 너희도 기적적으로 호수를 벗어날 수. Am I getting through to you? Spare me, and you just might sail out of this lake with your. 이런 의미도 없는 뻔한 말을 일일이 들어주는 것도 한심해. I'm tired of listening to these inane, meaningless pleas. 방금 저게 마지막이었죠? 다시 배로 복귀하면 되겠어요. That was the last one, right? Let's go back to our ship. The ship was still as death. Its sail fluttered a forlorn dance in the winds. So, something's been bothering me. Wasn't it weird how they all seem so certain? That if we kept going this way, we'd run into some other huge disaster? It is nothing of note, manager. It is but a byproduct of their firm belief in their advantage over us. 그것보다 특이했던 것은 저들의 선체 아래 날카로운 것들이 무수하게 박혀 있었다는 것입니다. I have observed an oddity, however. They had installed numerous spikes on the lower side of their ship's hull. 백길이의 충돌을 대비한 것 아닌가? 해상 근접전에서는 그런 일이 왕왕 있다고 들었다. Are they not for ramming into other vessels? I've heard that such tactics were occasionally used in naval combat. 충각을 노렸다기에는 위치가 배 바닥에 중점적으로 몰려 있었고 부식의 정도를 보았을 때 설치한 지 그리 오래되진 않아 보인다.
they were installed far too low in the water to be useful as a means of ramming into another ship. It can be extrapolated from the metal's level of corrosion that the spikes, concentrated on the keel of the boat, have been recently installed. How did you see the keel of a boat? The water was clearer up close than it appeared from a distance. Hmm. Maybe they were trying to stop something from climbing up to the ship? Can't imagine that any fish would swim blindly into the keel of a boat. They're not birds crashing into windows. Maybe it was nothing. You know how superstitious pirates can be. What if it's like a good luck charm? <sighs> Maybe we should have let that assistant manager pilot tag along. How's the shit? Why are going to Know anything about this, Frau Faust? No pertinent information has been updated. The most we could do is to ensure that we do not violate any laws of the Great Lake. Thus continued our journey to the Lobotomy Corp branch with the variable coordinates pilot gave us. Paranoia of the unknown weighing heavily on our shoulders. After an indeterminate amount of time. Hmm. Otis, Otis, we will have to steer the ship port side. What? Otis, who was looking out ahead from the bow, 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 of the ship, whipped around. Whatever Faust si said seemed to have hit her unexpectedly. Boy, hey, it hasn't been an hour since you told us we'll have to cross this zone in a, str in a straight line. We are falling short of our target speed. At our current rate, we will be struck by the next zone's waves as soon as we exit here. Is that the law of this zone? 맞습니다. Indeed. Though our encounter with the pilots was rapidly resolved, we still fell behind schedule. The variable coordinates now points to a different route. How much time are we going to have to waste here? According to the variable coordinates, the necessary roundabout path will cost us three more days. <sighs> Otis bit her lip with discontent before suddenly turning in my direction. Executive Manager, I have a genius plan. A plan that will not only accelerate this operation, but also increase the chances of securing and rescuing the lives of the LCCB agents. If we were to waste three more days at sea, there is very little guarantee for their well-being. Well, what's the plan? We keep going forward. With that, Otis slowly raised the acceleration lever. What? 
제정신인가요? 파도가 올 것이라는 걸 미리 알고 그 안으로 들어가겠다고요? Are you nuts? We'd be sailing right into the waves, you know that? 파도에 대해서는 나도 들은 것들이 있다 물게. 모를 줄 알았나? 네 녀석도 파도를 겪고 이겨낸 경험이 많았을 거라고 보는데. I know what the waves are, Swabi. I'm not as ignorant of the Great Lake as you might think. You've had plenty of experience weathering and conquering waves as well, haven't you? 그야 당연하죠. 하지만 그건 정보가 부족해서 어쩔 수 없이 맞닥뜨린 파도들이었어요. 알고 지나간 적은 한 번도 없다고요. Yeah, but that's because they were unavoidable. Because we lacked enough information to take the roundabout path. I've never sailed knowingly into the waves before. 하지만 이겨냈던 거지? But you still prevailed, didn't you? 심지어 지금처럼 무한한 목숨이 아니던 시기에도 말이지. 그건 우리가 충분히 이겨낼 수 있음을 의미한다. And that was when you didn't have someone to bring you back. I say this is well within our capabilities. 더불어 작전 속도의 단축과 관리자님 그리고 소수 졸개가 원했던 구출 확률 증가까지 얻는다. Besides. There's the added benefit of accelerating our mission and the higher possibility of rescue that the executive manager and a few underlings wanted. Ismail, 너는 우리가 지지부진하던 게영 마음에 들지 않았던 것만 같은데. 어. 3일간 일광 건조라도 하고 싶어졌나? It was clear to me that you, Ishmael, weren't so happy with how slow our progress has been. What is it? Did you suddenly gain a yearning for a three-day sunbathing break? Instead of responding to Otis's sarcastic remark, Ishmael squinted in the in the direction the boat was speeding in. The tides, the odor, the speed, the color. That lake over there is the blue whirling lake of murk and fish reek. I haven't suffered its waves before, but I know many ships that have, many of which are now lying at the bottom of the lake. Fine, as long as we don't join them. So, I do 아니다 싶으면 다시 돌아와도 되잖아요. 그렇지 않나요? I like how optimistic you are, but turning a boat is not that fast. Even a magic boat. <laughs> what, what if we just went in to take a quick look? And if we feel like it's too much for us, we could just go back the way we came from. Right? 다시 돌아간다고요? 이 호수에는 왔던 길로 되돌아간다는 개념이 없단 말이에요. Go back the... There is no such thing as going back in this lake. Your decision, Dante. Let's try following Otis's plan. Understood. Crossing the zone's borders to the target lake. Otis <sighs> 당신의 생각에 맞아 들어야 할 거예요. You've got to be kidding me. Uh, Otis, you better be right. As soon as those words left Ishmael's mouth, there was a flash in the sky. Thunder? 비가 몰아치네요. It's really starting to pour. 태풍의 눈가야 아니다. We're in the eye of the storm. Wait, but the sky was clear just moments ago. How could this... The waves are already here, manager. Hmm. That was an entertaining display. 
슬슬 그 기능을 사용해 볼까? Karen, this seems like a good opportunity to test that function. 버티기 모드 전환. Okay, switching to endure mode. <laughs> oh. Boss fight mode. Gotcha. That's when reality began to sink in. What had happened to... What happens to... And what will happen to everyone and everything that entered this lake without preparation for what's to come. What should... What should we do now, Ishmael? There's this adage in that every greenhorn sailor of the Great Lake years before they set their first sail. There is but one thing you can count on if you find yourself in an unfamiliar lake whose waves are alien to you. A colossal wave rises to its crest before us. S.I.C. Ready your weapons if you want to delay the inevitable. It's not your sailing prowess, your far-seeing eyes of a pathfinder, or the unbreakable bond between you and your mates. Many sailors fail to endure this trial, and instead choose to become sacrifices to the depths of the lake. Huh? Something's climbing onto our ship! Trust nothing but the fate of your own resolve to hold steadfast in the face of terror, in the face of calamity. Though the raging lake may remain indifferent to the will of your meager existence. You know, I'm getting real sin vibes from, uh, I believe it's Final Fantasy X, my mom's favorite game, funny enough. Uh, yeah, getting real sin vibes of a bunch of tiny creatures popping out of a huge creature's body. Alright, let's see. What you got? Vomit froth. Heads hit, uh, apply to sinking twice. Gotcha. Claw. If target has 5 plus sinking, deal 20% damage. On hit, deal heal for 30% of damage dealt. On hit, inflict 5 sinking. Passives. Whale of the Porous Hand takes damage when this unit is defeated. Connected Vein. Upon death, deal 10 damage to connected mermaids. Then apply 2 damage up for the next scene. This effect cannot drop the connected mermaid's health below one. Right. So is this a uh, a targeted? No. Okay. Gotcha. All right, I guess we're just going to have a uh, repost hit then. Yeah. 
Okay, a couple staggers went down. Let's see. Uh, we do have a guaranteed blunt coming after, so this will be plus two. I don't believe we took damage, though. So we could get... Yeah, you know what? We can actually get the plus three, because we didn't take any damage. Then we can guaranteed kill this. Potentially win this clash, because we do have some MV resistance. Double sloth. Try and get an execute reset. And triple sloth. Oh, missed both heads hits. Very unfortunate. All right. So no execute resets for us just yet. We can go triple green, gain some damage up, and finish them off. All mermaids down. Okay, here we go again. So let's go boom, boom, damage up twice, and then just get all of the resonance. Luckily, it doesn't matter even if we lose the clashes on Heathcliff, he's gonna get the damage up regardless. <laughs> Also, didn't quite realize that this one is significantly bigger. Definitely should have paid attention to that. We'll look at his passives uh, after we finish our classes. Alright, what you got? What you got, big boy? Water jet, double sinking, right? Damp strike. On hit, inflict two sinking fragility. Let's see. That. Take plus one damage per count from sinking effects. Oh. Nasty. Inflict plus three bleed count and heal for 50% of damage. Done. Clutch of the waves. On hit, inflict two sinking. Heads hit, inflict two bleed. On hit, do the same. Okay. Shrieking waves. Deal plus 20% per five sinking potency on target. If target SP is below zero, deal 10% more damage. Also, sinking deluge. Deal SP damage by sinking count times sinking potency, then remove sinking. If target's SP is negative 45 or lower, the excess SP damage is dealt as Gloom Affinity HP damage. Units with no sanity take all of it as Gloom HP damage. Right. Okay. All right. And then your passives takes damage when this unit is defeated and connected pain. Okay. Well... Looking at our resonance here, I'm gonna go boom, 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 boom. Okay, we do have a neutral in there, which bumps up to favored because we have a blunt dice coming directly after it, so it should just be good enough. Okay. You are lost. No words come to mind to rightly describe that creature. Hosu Mitesanen, Chongche will make a turn. The unfathomable entities inhabiting the depths of the lake are called whales, and those that emerge from them are called mermaids. They 
that's the wail of the porous hand. I was really hoping to avoid that one. Is that one of the whales they were talking about at Ucorp? Don't worry, Sinclair. I'm sure there's a very beautiful mermaid out there. Somewhere. Do mermaids raid ships too? I read about them once as a child, but these don't look anything like how they did in the books. Inora? Mermaids. I still remember the horrible bedtime stories my brother used to tell me about them. So, they make perfumes out of these things? Virgie, isn't it a good time for you to lend us a hand for once? Really? That's a guy who practically spectated like a bystander when we got slaughtered back at K-Corp. He didn't even blink. Ah, Ah, but he did wave at us though. But I couldn't wave back because my wrists were getting snapped in half. Of course. I won't sit idly by as Mephistopheles sinks, if it ever comes to that. But... Know that I will only... I will take action only under a very particular set of circumstances. In which all of you are decimated. The enemies have crushed the manager's head and are about to tear the hands off of that clock. Are... Are you serious right now? Dante, Dante, I can't allow them to take the company's precious assets right before my eyes now, can I? So, I'm afraid that you won't see me step in before every single one of you are dead. Mr. Guide, are you really as good as they say? Maybe the stories about you were just tall tales, you know. Oh, poor Don. That's... No. Do not. Oh, uh, Yeah, that's not... That's just... Uh, not... Two previous victims of Virgilius's... Of Virgilius interjected, albeit in hollow voices, to... Rebute. Radia's rather dangerous remark. Karani. So either take them out, welcome them aboard with open arms, or whatever. I'm leaving it all up to you. I gotta tell you, this, uh, this particular mission specifically trying to get it in 10 or under turns kind of difficult um 
Mr. Stone Man that I can't remember the name of, Mersault. Uh, he's not very good in this fight. <laughs> His dice just do not roll high enough, and we can't get uh, Metal Man's head going quick enough for him, so he's not very good in this fight. So I went ahead and removed him, and instead we now have the Biter Don Quixote. So we have massive resist resonance for Gluttony. We're kind of just going to hope this is enough. We don't have enough bullets to use most of Ishmael's stuff. So here we go. Let's just hope this is enough. We have a couple AoEs. We have a lot of strength. And we got good crit. Ooh, 66 damage while hitting two of them. That's actually not nearly enough for what we need. We'll, we'll see, though. We still got a couple AoEs coming. <laughs> not hitting a heads is uh, real bad. 92 damage is pretty good, though. Ah, it's not enough with the shield. Yeah, not enough. It got close. Fifty-one health, and he was the last one. Dang! Yeah, so this one is really hard to do in uh, ten or under turns. This is probably my third attempt, so this is pretty close. But yeah, no dice. These big guys are just—they have so much health. They're kind of ridiculously chunky. Uh. Oh, hey, we got the hand. Goodbye. Don't come back. Don't you squeeze at me? How many left? None. Then this is the last one. There was something off about those mermaids that crawled out of the whale. You don't say, Dante. Really? What part was it? The fact that they were all uh, health-linked? The fact that the whale was health-linked? The fact that they definitely were not mermaids? Or the fact that they were trying to kill us? A feeling not so different from looking at an abnormality or a distortion. Mermaids. Were they human ones? I guess I should have explained better. Not every creature that lives in the depths of the Great Lake are called whales. Whales specifically refer to... Everything in the Great Lake that can parasitize humans. And whales give birth to mermaids. Oh, so there's a couple uh, whales in uh, the Lobotomy Corporation in that case. <laughs> there's a lot of abnormalities that do that. And where do the mermaids come from? They're people devoured by whales that came with the waves. There's no guarantee that we won't meet the same fate. See? Now you know why you could turn the clock all day and fail to bring us back. 
I see now. The waves will be unrelenting, unabating. And Ishmael, who'd already weathered and braved these endless crashing waves, was starting to snap, strand by strand. I have a mission that I can't fail. And I'll kill everything that stands in my way. Even if I were to stumble, even if every part of me were to fall apart, I'll see it through to the end. Determined and ferocious. Both good attitudes to have when setting sail on an adventure. Because our voyage is just getting started. Oh, weird. What in the world? Actually, I wonder if we can get some uh, some hints about how things go. So, this one's a massive whirlpool. Uh, this, maybe. This one has a massive, probably, volcano that goes off. This is uh, Cthulhu. This is Kraken territory. This one's a giant monster boat that probably pretends to be a boat, but it's not. This is probably the main place where we came from. Yeah. The lake. When I look into the lake, I see my shimmering reflection. Maybe I'm just as refracted and twisted like my reflection in the water. It doesn't matter which lake we're on. I always look so warped, so unstable. happened upon Ishmael's musings around the time when we were on our way to the elusive Lobotomy Corp branch of the Great Lake. It had been a while since our last disastrous incident. Maybe my distorted reflections were just me. Even from a distance, it was evident that Ishmael was gazing down at her own reflection in the water. I rested my wandering feet and decided to watch her for a moment. I wanted to see what Ishmael was looking at together. My hands were peeling. Bleeding. Salt water seeped into my gaping wounds. It hurt so much. So, so much that I thought I might faint if I didn't let go. But I couldn't. I... What was I holding on to? Executive Manager, there is a matter that requires your attention. We are approaching our next coordinates. Okay. I'll go see too. Ishmael woke from her introspection and straightened herself. She strode towards us. 
What's up ahead? The radar's caught something. We have visual on... A solitary ship. Oh, is this that mimic ship that I was theorizing about like two seconds ago? And it looks like we have three hours to kill before we're allowed to move on to the next lake. Unless... The executive manager would authorize us to weather the waves once more. No, Otis. The losses were worse than I anticipated. Remember what Ishmael said. We were extremely lucky the waves that came for us was a relatively manageable one. <laughs> yes, executive manager. Thanks to Otis, who quickly abandoned the idea, the sinners and I could observe this new vessel with somewhat lighter hearts. <sighs> Uh, what a relief. That doesn't look like a pirate ship. That's... <clears throat> yeah. I'm just... I'm gonna let that sink in. Are we all good with that? All right. Lo! That is a mini cruise ship over yonder! <laughs> oh boy. Oh uh, yeah. Mm hmm. Oh, that's great. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. A veritable party ship! A vessel of partying! Even from this distance, I could see the colorful balloons and banners decorating the ship. None shall be vexed, no matter how I frolic at a party. Not will pay mind to how I leap and run and shout in there. What joy, is it not? <sighs> Virgie, go easy on the girl, why don't you? <sighs> <sighs> But, mm, I'm sure they sell local delicacies there, too. Liquor, treats not found anywhere else in the city. Radia and Don both shot twinkling glances in my direction, then at Virgilius, then back at me. Virgilius shrugged. Whatever we decided to do here was none of his business. Well... Maybe they can tell us something about the nearby Lobotomy Corp branch. Or maybe they know something about the LCCB agents. <laughs> Dawn was rhythmically swaying her shoulders. Maybe she's trying to imitate the Marlin dance she glimpsed back at the club. Oh boy. Hi ho! Allow me to ask thee and thy fine company a few questions! <laughs> the faintly blaring music was the only response from the ship. <laughs> Maybe they can't hear some of the music! Boy, music these days, they're just too loud for me. 
It'll be faster if we just head over there and ask them in person. <sighs> I guess we can quickly stop by and ask them a few questions. And here comes the celebration. We had three hours to kill anyway. Might as well make ourselves useful and collect some intel. Ishmael shot a glance at Virgilius before staring at the floor wordlessly. I'd say it's a reckless idea to just row up to a random vessel we don't know anything about, like its owner or its history. But if the executive manager insists... Sure. Let's stop by. Now that was a very Otis thing to say, isn't it? It's just the attitude I decided to adopt. Now, this boat will come in useful. Will this boat not capsize? Should I pack some life vests or a boy? Boy? See, I almost want to believe if you fall into the lake, you're just dead, right? Like. I mean, maybe if it's like calm waters, but what's to say the moment you touch the water, something isn't like Mach 10 going to grab you, you know what, I, you know what I'm saying? Like, if the lake is alive, it would notice, hey, you know, it's like, picture it this way, right? You're doing your thing, you know, enjoying life. You feel a fly get on you. You're in, your immediate reaction is going to be, I got to smack this fly or at least like wave it off me. Right? And you're gonna do that pretty much instantly. And what is that, like, a second? Two seconds? If you're really slow reaction, four seconds? It's that fast, right? And keep in mind, our size compared to a fly's size. That is no different from the lake to us. <laughs> I'm just saying. By the time all 13 of us squeezed our way in, the skiff was absolutely packed and precariously swaying. Some sinner's face is darkened with concern. Don't worry, guys. Even if you all drown, I'll bring you guys right back. All right as rain. That doesn't really ease my uh, nerves at all, manager. Thank you for making it worse. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> That's a suspicious thing to say, Virgilius. Is, uh... Is this a drink the Kool-Aid situation? Right then. Drink responsibly, everyone. In a manner that was extremely out of character, Virgilius waved at us. Does he know something that we don't? Whew. Alrighty, guys. I think that's gonna do it for this episode. Um, normally, I would keep going a little bit longer. However... I'm just so hot, uh, and hey, I mean, you know, it's about an hour, give or take, so we still got a lot of progress in this episode, but I, I'm just, I'm so hot, uh, and while recording, I always have my window closed, so it's just slowly turning into an oven, so, you know, that's always fun, but... With that being said, thank you guys so much for watching, hopefully you enjoyed this episode of Limbus Company. Also, from the very little that you saw of her, do you think that the butler is far too strong? Or should we just keep using her? Also, I was really debating using the second butler, but uh, you know. Do we do we wanna have a a team of maids and ego? lobotomy bruna theme stuff i mean we could that's up to you guys though so with that being said thank you guys so much for watching hopefully you enjoyed and i will see you in the next one
Hopefully, one that's a lot cooler. Bye.